Uh, let's move to the presentation. So as I was mentioning, uh, there is three presentation, one by uh, WHO on the existing WHO tools, then another one on uh, what's happening in India related to uh, digital COVID uh, systems, COVID certificates, and then the European uh, Union uh, presentation on their digital COVID certificate they've implemented. Uh, so uh, let's uh, right away start uh, with uh, Dr. Garrett Mel, uh, who is unit head uh, of the digital health technology at WHO. I think we, we and, and actually is going to speak as well uh, with, uh, with Michael Sweets, right? Uh, I mean, later on, yeah, sorry. Uh, Dr. Mel, go ahead. Terrific, and thank you so much. It's a real honor and uh, really uh, thrilled about the, this workshop and, and the collaboration between SCAP and, and WHO. Um, th thanks uh, very much. Um, I will uh, start with a presentation uh, and please let me know um, when you can see my blank screen. Yes. Terrific, th thanks so much. Um, so. I will uh, be talking a little bit about the, the content and the process that we use to get uh, to a point of uh, releasing uh, the guidance on the digital documentation of COVID certificates uh, for vaccination and the additional work that we're doing to ensure laboratory results. Um, guidance will also be made available shortly. Um, and the, the real uh, operational implications uh, and opportunities for, for countries. Um, what a little uh, set the tone for and the context for uh, which we uh, recognized um, the need for this, uh, this area of guidance. Um, in uh, January, when we uh, started looking at, at whether guidance was needed, um, we recognized that there were multiple um, competing products that were available in the marketplace um, and that um, there was a lack of criteria for assessing those solutions or even uh, specifications for, um, for countries to be able to uh, evaluate and understand whether or not those specific approaches were going to uh, be compatible with one another. Um, we also recognize that there was inconsistent data collected. Um, there was not necessarily a use of interoperability standards uh, and the prospect of incompatibility um, was on the horizon and, and uh, would, would prove uh, challenging for, for countries. Um, the, uh, there was not necessarily any specific uh, documentation of this uh, functionality um, or guidance around the privacy um, and the governance and the procedures that would, would need to be in place to mitigate uh, misuse um, that would likely undermine confidence um, in countries and, and also individuals uh, using certificates. Um, there was, as rightly noted in, in the opening presentations, an, an inequitable availability of vaccinations um, and a recognition that lab test results would, would become important uh, for the purposes of, of certificates uh, it, uh, due to the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the inequitable access to vaccinations. Um, the uh, uh, jurisdictions were are. Uh, starting to also uh, use certificates to um, uh, exclude individuals from uh, particular venues and there needed to be guidance on ethical use. And then lastly, um, it was important to recognize that uh, the potential for fraudulence uh, was there and, and that would also undermine trust and there needed to be some specifications that would help guide countries into how to use certificates in a way that would um, strengthen um, their ability to trust um, that a certificate has been issued um, by a public health authority um, to place their trust in it. Uh, as uh, Dr. Swaminathan noted, the uh, international health regulations uh, and specifically the emergency committee um, has met a number of times uh, from January uh, through July um, and have detailed some very specific advice to WHO around establishing um, specifications and standards that uh, would be helpful to um, document um, the uh, COVID status um, in relation to travel. Um, and uh, the specific guidance was really around ensuring that there was uh, guidance that uh, would support interoperability, um, that it uh, leveraged um, not only digital, but also augmented paper and paper itself um, and the rec 
the ICVP or the yellow card um, uh, could be updated to accommodate uh, the needs of COVID, uh, including laboratory results. Um, and that there was an encouragement to WHO to fast track this approach um, uh, so that uh, it could be widely used, um, um, recognizing that um, it should not be uh, used as a, as a way of, um, uh, as a proof of travel, but rather to mitigate um, the risk um, as, as uh, stated. Um, so the goal then for the work around the guidance and the overall initiative, um, uh, which uh, brought together um, 183 uh, different participants from um, 18 different governments and 25 different agencies um, was to achieve implementable specifications and standards for the uh, application of a digital vaccination certificate for uh, both domestic as well as cross-border purposes. And um, through this documentation to ensure uh, data representation exchange privacy and security um, while facilitating um, the purposes of continuity of care, which really is about ensuring that individuals are fully vaccinated and that they're able to come back and know when to come back for their vaccines, um, enabling verifiable proof of status from an authorized issuer and endow individuals with a digitized portable personal record that they themselves would um, uh, carry uh, with them and, and have access to um, as, a, as a starting point for a, for a record around um, COVID status, but also or COVID certificate status, but uh, also for other purposes as well. Um, so we sought out to publish specifications and standards, um, uh, re ensuring that data representation and the functionality at a minimum was de described in so that member states and countries would be able to look at and, and understand whether solutions were, digital solutions were uh, fully up to the uh, standards that, that were defined. I'm sure that um, there was an understanding uh, from this guidance around the aspects uh, that are critical for, for good implementation around governance and ethics um, and recognizing that um, the purposes of, of trust um, uh, for the purposes of trust, um, the aspects of a, of a joint architecture become important um, and the ability to issue a certificate um, in a way that uh, would be trusted by another party uh, or another country, uh, it become important uh, aspects and, and those are also detailed um, so that um, so digital uh, approaches uh, could be uh, identified and curated that conform the specifications and that the collective uh, uh, organizations and, uh, and countries that are implementing these can learn from one another. This document is not a policy document. It is very much a technical document intended for those making decisions and planning, as well as those who are actually architecting um, the, uh, the digital approach in the country. Um, there are aligned documents that specify the policies um, that are available and, and this PowerPoint will be shared with you so that you can see those additional uh, doc guidance documents. And I'll just note that those get implemented, or sorry, updated on a fairly regular basis. And it's important to just uh, keep that in mind that um, WHO will continue to release uh, interim guidance uh, for countries. Of the specifications um, we recognize would, from an equity perspective, need to reflect um, an understanding that uh, different countries are at different stages of maturity in adoption of digital systems, um, and that uh, for a period of time and for a variety of purpose, uh, purposes, they may need to use uh, paper solutions as well. Um, and as the uh, Emergency Committee for IHR uh, recommended, uh, there would need to be a, an adaptation and update of the, of the yellow card um, to accommodate COVID. And at the same time, we recognize the augmentation um, through digital means of paper, as well as fully digital um, offline and online approaches um, would uh, make it possible for countries at different stages to uh, use uh, these specifications and implement them for, uh, for COVID certificates. Um, we recognize these two uses, um, both uh, domestic as well as international. So continuity of care is uh, the use case that re reflects when um, a certificate is presented to a medical authority so that the individual can be considered part of a continu continuing 
um, care model and they can ensure that they get their full vaccination. And secondly, that they have a personal record of that event and that fully vaccinated status. Um, secondly, is the proof of vaccination. So a certificate that's presented as proof that the individual has received the vaccination for COVID and that the verifier can uh, feel confident that it was uh, issued by uh, the authorized authority. Um, the document itself um, is, as I noted, a technical document. It, it does focus on um, who, is, who are the users, what are the expected workflows, um, what are the minimum data elements, and we've mapped those to interoperability standards to help facilitate exchange between systems um, in a standardized way. We've also included um, what the system should do and why um, these requirements. And then we've recognized that a public key infrastructure is um, uh, the, the architectural approach um, that uh, is important for establishing um, the trust of uh, the issuer and the verifier and the mechanisms to do that. And lastly, uh, we built this um, and recognized that uh, countries are increasingly adopting um, the use of interoperability standards um, defined by HL7. Uh, and so we have also included and uh, mapped these to the International Patient Summary um, and acknowledge that the countries are likely to want to make use of that uh, approach. Um, and then lastly, we focus as well on the implementation considerations, knowing that uh, privacy by design is important and the ethical considerations and, and other guidance is important for countries to, to do this well um, and, and continue to have trust uh, from their populations in these approaches. Um, just to give an example of, of what, this, uh, what the document, when you dig into it, looks like, it does acknowledge a paper or an offline digital or a fully digital approach and functionally what a system should do. And it additionally includes um, the optional and required elements for different use cases um, that are important for ensuring that your system then um, is able to uh, represent the data in a consistent way. Um, we have also include, included the HL7 uh, FHIR implementation guide uh, with the value sets, um, which uh, in this case, we've included free value sets of ICD-11 and ICD-10. Um, and so those engineers who are in the room or uh, you would want to point to um, would be able to then access the, uh, the specific content. Um, we recognize that countries will want to implement this in different ways, uh, paper, smartphone, et cetera. And we have detailed that and, and provided that, the, that flexibility. Uh, we've also recognized that they are, there are different users of these uh, in the country and, and ensuring that countries have the ability to do that. Uh, policies will be important um, and need potentially to be adapted uh, for this purpose. Um, and that um, unique identification, uh, uh, the opportunity for countries to decide whether or not they want to bind the certificate to the identity of the person or want to separate that. And countries will also want to, rec to determine whether or not they will want to connect their uh, public key infrastructure uh, approach to a trusted uh, net, uh, other regional network that may exist like um, the one that we'll hear about from the European Commission um, uh, for the purposes of adequacy or equivalence um, and the uh, agreements that would be necessary to establish that. And SCAP, uh, the number of countries that are part of this uh, uh, may serve as a, a useful starting point for considering a, an approach that uh, where there is an adequacy or an equivalence of uh, certificates between countries, um, it should be potentially considered. Um, we recognize that there are different mechanisms um, and different uh, uh, solutions that you might want to it, uh, use uh, to issue this uh, specification, including the ICAO um, approach um, where uh, e-passports and the aviation industry becomes important. Uh, we'll also note that there's travel um, with uh, between countries in this region with the EU. And, and so we've also included uh, and, and understood that, that countries may want to map this to, to that approach. Um, and we provided a, really a, a operationally how, how one might do that. Um, and uh, we've also noted that um, this uh, kind of guidance is helpful to guide um, companies who are in trying to ensure that their uh, digital approaches are consistent with a specification. Um, and secondly, that uh, member states then are able to 
identify those uh, products or those solutions or, or their own approach and make sure that they are consistent with the specification. Um, the document uh, guidance is available here, and I know my colleagues in, in the chat have already included the linkages. I'll just note there is also a data dictionary in addition to the guidance. There's also a technical briefing uh, document which uh, summarizes and provides a, a shorter summary of, of how to make use of this document. And I'll also note, as uh, Dr. Swaminathan mentioned, uh, we'll be releasing guidance related to lab results that will include negative test results as well as history of infection. Um, and uh, we'll also be making available reference laboratorных тестов для этого необходимо справочное программное обеспечение с открытым кодом development and countries to ensure that available software would then be able to issue certificates in a way that would be consistent with other standards like ICAO and EU and uh, DIVOC that uh, you'll hear a little bit more about. Um, and, um, and then uh, the, uh, as uh, Dr. Swaminathan also noted, um, there's an effort internally within WHO, given the recommendations of the Emergency Committee from IHR, to update the yellow card to accommodate uh, both uh, COVID and also uh, accommodate a digital future. Um, and we, uh, as an organization, are happy to help uh, through technical assistance to countries um, to adopt this standard and understand the standard and, and work with them on the DDCC standard. Um, and thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Mel, for your presentation. And I think it, you, you start, it's very comprehensive and then starting going into the technical details, right? Uh, and so the good news is that WHO apparently has its act together because you've got all the technical details laid out. Uh, for countries to use. So now the, the, the important thing is that uh, people actually start looking at this into a uh, lot more details and, and try to, uh, to implement it. Right? So for this, I can already foresee some capacity building and technical assistance may actually be needed uh, because it's, uh, it's never uh, easy, right? Uh, so thank you again.